Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Um, the date is February 25th. Um, the David Pierce maintained timepiece says it's 6:20, so a little bit later than we uh, anticipated. But we got Sarah Snyder is in the audience tonight to talk to us about the pathway, <coughs> and Sarah's going to be very efficient, so we can get right back yeah. on schedule. How's that, Sarah? Excellent. Perfect. <coughs> oh. oh, you got the dreaded. Uh, no, you don't. Seven. Don't, don't worry. Seven days, Sarah. You'll be better in seven days no, no, or so. Not that. I went to Guatemala on vacation and there was an active volcano going off oh, and really you bad reaction down. to the volcanic ash in the air. Yep. Uh. Good thing it wasn't Pompeii. <laughs> I know. So I guess you didn't cr you didn't <clears throat> climb that volcano then, did you? I, I didn't. No. Okay. Um, anyway, okay, so I'll try to get through without coughing. So I'm here to present an updated plan for um, the uh, parking yep. in the park. And you have a, you got the printer. Got it right here. Okay, so if you recall, um, originally we had a plan to have, um, extend, the, extend the parking lot with a gravel section. And then when the, bid, the bids came in, they came in much higher than we thought, and um, we couldn't actually even afford to do that. So we didn't we didn't accept any of the alternates, and we decided to regroup. Well, we regrouped, and we're here to propose. Actually, we put together a package, and we're proposing a partnership with again with the state Depart Department of Fish and Game Office of Boating and Fishing Access, the wonderful people who brought you the upgraded boat ramp. And, um, nice boat ramp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Smith is here from that office, and um, they are making a very generous offer to partner with us on this. Um, and um, they're in a well, Terry can tell you more, but they're in a good position to kick in some funding um, if we put in some um, trailer spaces yep. in the back there, which we were going to do anyway. We need, we've known all along that we need more trailer spaces. Um, I bet you the library is very happy about that. Yes. Um, and um, so I was down here on Labor Day and I saw um, eight trailers parked. Um, kitty, all kitty wampus all over, you know, mm -hmm. you know, crossing four spaces and <clears throat> out on the field and everything. Mm -hmm. So this is going to bring a lot of order. Um, and signage, and um, it's a it's a quite a significant upgrade from our original plan. And not only um, we're proposing, not only um, can we afford now to do this, but we can afford the other alternates as well now. Terry, Terry, are you going to put the normal signage up that you, the brown side that says it's for? Uh, um, parking with boats, trailers mm -hmm. only? Yes, and, and what, um, I was just looking through, the select, the select board had, had reached an agreement with us back in September of 2016 when the boat access was going to be redone. Yep. So we have a new land management agreement um, that would need to be signed to amend this. Yep. And what it spells out is that there be um, the six car top trailer spaces at the library. Yep. like there are now there be um, three spaces that exist there now for boat trailers and then there would be five additional ones over here I, and I guess that was my biggest question was um, from my my use mm -hmm. down here um, I, I see it, it's funny because a lot of times I see more car toppers um, versus, and, 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 and like I know up in Gill, um, the, the, there's a sign that says parking, you know, basically you need to have a trailer, but there's a lot of people that don't have trailers that are using right. the they sites use, now. So we have signage that says, and, and this is how I think it would work best here would be the signage would say um, parking for vehicles with 
all of the spaces over at the library yep. will be um, six car top spaces, parking for vehicles with car top boats only. The other three spaces that are there could be labeled as parking for vehicles with boat trailers or car top. And then these spaces over here would be, I'm, I'm viewing these five spaces over here as something that would be, you know, almost like an overflow on, on the weekends or yeah. um, when there's a special event going on. And now with the agreement that we have with the town, if there's a special event like last fall, there was a big kayaking event yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, now the town has, through the agreement, you guys sign off on those special permits along with exactly. our agency. So you'll be aware of when there's bigger events coming when these might be used. And, and um, you know, and there might be an interest. Um, this section of the room, you know, as you know, it really doesn't, there's, um, there's a it's speed, heavy, it's heavily speed limit used. on it. No, it's, it's heavily used. There's no, <laughs> oh, it's terrible, don't come here, no. And, and so it is, so what I was leading into is it, it's a very tough section of the river to navigate. So, you know, we don't, we're not promoting it like, you know, as being, you know, a, a big increase in, in boat traffic. Um, but since the facility down here was improved um, last year, that I think there's been, you know, there has been more usage. Yeah, a little there, there has, and, <clears throat> and, and I would say I was, I, and again, I've lived here for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. I've had someone in the room for a teacher 40 years ago, but <laughs> I don't know who that would be. Yeah. Um, although I know how, I know I can tell the sex of fruit flies pretty damn well, um, but I've, I've always been amazed at how few people actually, because it, if you are a canoer, if you are a kayaker, um, it is some of the most most undisturbed portions of the river that you can find, and I, and in the boat, and typically the boats that we see. Like if I'm out in my canoe or the kayak, the boaters that we see are very respectful of of others. So it's not like in some other areas of the river. So yeah. I, I it's it's been amazing. So so I so I have two copies of the land management agreement, which would be need to be amended, and then we also have um, a town contract. The way we would be able to pay the town or reimburse the town would be. Um, you guys have an ongoing contract. Um, you know, it saves us the engineering, saves us the um, public procurement process because you've already gone through that. So we would have a, we have a contract. Um, we're one of the few agencies left in the state that can do it. Um, but we have a town contract where you guys would be the contractor for mm -hmm. us, basically. So you're you're handling that, yep. and then when you get the invoice in from your contractor who does the parking lot then we would reimburse the town. So there'd be a, I'll coordinate with Carlo, with, with the engineer for the job and with Sarah. Um, and then when the contractor puts his request in for payment, then we can um, reimburse the town. And so, so what we come up with is um, looking at costs. We've had several meetings and we can contribute up to $32,000. <clears> for for the paved parking spaces. And that's what we went back and forth a little bit on, was what should be gravel, what should be paved. My feeling is the pavement is always better because otherwise it's a headache for the highway department to maintain. Mm -hmm. If you got people yep. you know, driving in circles, <clears throat> you're gonna end up with potholes and, and stuff. So I kind of advocated for that. Yep. Um, but that's but that's what I have, so I'll leave it. I can with leave it with Sherry. Yep. Um, there's signatures by thank, the board. Thank you for working yeah. with us yeah. because sure. really yeah, it's, it's it's through you know your your guys' help that we've been able to do everything. So, and I really and I really think that the when the walkway goes in, I think you're going to get a. Uh, I mean, people are already seeing it, talking about seeing it from the top of Sugarloaf on their walks, and and uh, and I and you actually can see it now driving over the bridge. So I think it's going to be. It's going to open up that whole that whole area. Yeah, it's a good it's a good project, and sir has been great coordinating it, and along with your engineer with our office. Yeah, and it looks good. Hopefully, we'll move forward. Uh, Sherry understands the I think with uh, the meetings we've had, like the special permit process yep. and, and all of the, all of that. But we'll take care of the signage. One thing that we talked about um, is the spaces that are are 
for the boat access is we'll, our, the guys that work with me, uh, we have our own line striping equipment, so we'd like to paint okay. those spaces a different color oh, so that people know, okay, here's where, sure. where you park. So Yep, that's uh, fine. We'll take care of that in the spring, and um, as soon as the contractor's done with the PU. I like that idea. Thank you, too. Yeah, and they'll repaint the ones over by the library, too, because oh, yeah. they're a little bit confusing because they're... They're sort of mixed message. Yeah, they're kind of the ones. <clears throat> yeah. They're, yeah, get some consistent. They, they lend you to believe, or lead you to believe that they're for single cars yeah. where people are supposed to park with the whole trailer. So. Okay. All right. Anything else there, Sarah? No, I just, I just want to make sure, that, you know, because we went when we went to um, town meeting and everything. You know, the original plan was for gravel. I just want to, you know, make sure everyone's okay with. Um, it's upgrade. I think that there are many, many advantages to this. The, the disadvantages are it's more perme <clears throat> uh, less permeable. But but Carlos did design um, drainage. So the stone around. Yeah, yeah he designed some infiltration so that yep. to try to hold right. handle some of the storm water coming off the blacktop so it infiltrates as opposed to. Yeah, okay. That'll be nice. Thank you. Thank nice. you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Thank you, you Terry. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome. If it's okay with the finance committee, I think we. Uh, we have one public comment. If you could do hear the public comment first. Mr. Public Comment. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I have what, in my mind, I have variously described as an issue in a number of other things that are less complimentary. Um, I'd like to preface my remarks by pointing out that I've been a resident here for nearly 60 years, and this is only the second time I brought an issue before the select board, so I'm not except except when the selectman may be driving by, you throw insults at him. No, I never <laughs> insulted you, but I did try to collar you. Uh, the, the the problem that I'm dealing with is that yesterday, when I tried to take my dog for a walk, I could not leave my property without getting in my car. At the ends of both sections of my driveway were huge puddles, some six inches or more deep. The one on the south side had extended about 15 feet down the sidewalk. So there was probably two to three inches of water down the sidewalk. Uh, I tried to go north. The sidewalk had not been plowed. A section of the lawn had been plowed. That's another issue that I talked to the town road boss about this morning, and he agreed they, they put in guide stakes and they ignore them. They go around them and do the lawn. So, uh, you know, you didn't have to save up for 40 years all to come at once, you know. <laughs> is this on Main Street? Or is this on Main Street? Okay. This is an issue not only for me. I can remember when Paul Rafita used to float the little paper boats <coughs> at the end of his driveway. And it's an issue that was created when the road was redone. Well, can I tell, can I tell you how that's progressing? Yeah. Um, George is planning on paving this year. Paving what? The road. Okay, so so George in the at the at this time is investigating how how things have changed over the um, last few years since the last time it was paved. So he he's investigating that right now. I I don't know where he stands on it, but I know we have talked. To, that's why South Main Street wasn't paved last year. We, we brought to his attention the water and driveways. Now, so so he's actually going back to look at that um, problem, and and we're having different you know to different ideas about what was actually there, and you know the beginning. Uh, the just a initial thought is that I I think he said there's like a from what it was was it was like an inch and a half, two inches higher 
now than last time, but I'll, you know, and so we would, we would not be higher than what it was originally. That's what I thought he was saying, but I'll have to check with him. All I know is that I did not have that problem <clears throat> in the 50 plus years I've been there until the road was redone. Yeah, and, and, and I, I just know we, we actually know what, what the road elevations were because um, the road was actually narrowed at the time it was last paved and George was able to find the curb and the road level. So the, the old curb where the old road is still there. So he, we know what that we know what that level was. Um, scuttlebutt that I've heard from other people who have apparently approached you about this problem was that the town does not feel responsible for that because it's a private driveway. It is, in my opinion. Uh, I think that argument is about as valid as our national emergency. Because when I bought that house, uh -huh. the section between the highway and the sidewalk was paved. Now, Mr. Russ, who was a very frugal old Yankee, I'm sure did not pave that. The town paved it. The town put the apron in. Okay. My driveway was gravel. Okay. I had it paved. I paved from the sidewalk around to the sidewalk. So that the idea that it's my driveway, can I park on town can I, property? Can I park in your driveway? And, and the key word there was my driveway, not Tom's. It was my. You said it, my driveway. What? So could I park in that lot? Could I park in that paved area? It's town property. Okay. Okay. I, I, but, I, you're the first, I mean, you're the first the argument that and, and, and that may that may exclude you from getting into your house. Well, if you park two vehicles, because I have two driveways. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go to that extent. I, I, I was 16 when I had them, so that was 44. That was 44 years ago. I still can't win. I mean, I, I, I know you. You got you. I, I, and I, I'm just saying. I, I, and, and again, I, I mean. And, and you're asking my opinion. My, my opinion is that that my opinion is that it's not the town's driveway. It's, it's in, in the town. The town grants you the right to go over town property to access your home. But if you put in a section of pavement, mm -hmm. are you not responsible for that section of pavement? Um, when when the state the state paved. The state paved, I forgot if it was uh, north on 47 or south on 47, and they said, look, we're going to pave this for you once, but we're not going to ever do it again. So if you want to maintain it, you have to pave it from, from this point forward, okay? So, so, so we paved, um, George has paved uh, four and a half miles of, of 40. Seven. So I guess the answer to your question is that if 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 the town didn't so if the town didn't want 47 paved because the state wasn't going to pay for it again. So I guess we could make 47 a a dirt road if if that makes sense. So I think that's what your analogy is: is that we paved it once, so we're always responsible. The town's always responsible to pave it for from now until perpetual. In infinity for next 100 years, I don't agree with that. I also agree, I saw in minutes that there was a board of selectmen um, and, and they were asked by a resident of North Plain Road if the town could use chapter uh, 90 monies to pave uh, in a little further on the driveway aprons. The board of selectmen at that time said no. One year later, the highway superintendent, and this is in minutes, I'm not making this stuff up, one year later, the hi the highway superintendent came to, to came to the board of selectmen and said, "Hey, we want to um, 
do you, do you want me to pave the aprons on South Main Street? And they said, yes. Two, two selectmen may have lived on South Main Street at that time. I don't have, know if that had anything to do with why they paved it, but that's in, that's in the minutes. So I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it's peculiar by one year before when we couldn't do it, but then it was on South Main Street, and they said that they could do it. So I, 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 I'm... I don't know the basis for the refusal, whether that was... Based oh no! I, I, I think if you read the minutes, I, I mean, you would say there was it was no, we weren't going to do it. The town doesn't do that, so, and, and and we can get the minutes if you want to read them. They're interesting reading. That's what that's what I think the minutes are great because it, it helps it helps bring things. So I, I don't know how so so there was a group of selectmen that said go ahead and pave it, and they lived on South Plain or they lived on South Main at that time. So now. How, how can, so because they said it was okay to pave, it's, it's now we're going to have to pay that <coughs> forever? I'm, I don't, I'm, huh? I, I don't, there I. There wouldn't have been a problem except for the change in the drainage when the road was redone. Well, and, and that's what I'm saying, that we're, the George is going to go back and he's going to look at what the elevations were. I, my 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 initial conversation with George is he's telling me that there's a there's a four inch difference. It's the road should actually be about four inches lower. That's what a previous. That wasn't one. That but that wasn't one paving, Bruce. Oh, but that's the problem. Right. The road's higher than the driveway. Right. But that that's not the right. last paving. Right, right. But I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that it's, it's, it's accumulation over years, but the last paving. It could be. Could be. Right. But the, what I. I think the driveway has something has to be done to get the drainage back to what it was. Well, and, and again, that that's we it, it we have to see. George, George is looking at that now. I'm saying, but so, so I should keep Marky Solomon on on speed dial because if I fall, I, I would. I, yeah, I, and, and again, I you know I I, I, I don't I'm not trying to be difficult. I I, I know I, I'm and I'm not three hip I'm, replacements. I'm, I'm pushing 81, and I can't get to my mailbox safely. I can't get to my newspaper safely. I had to walk the dog out in the highway, and you know how they go on 47 because the sidewalk was unpassable coated with ice and my couldn't get out either of my driveways because it was a skating rink. And I don't think I'm being unreasonable to ask. I'm not asking for the moon. You know, we, we spent a lot of money paving a road that maybe five cars a day go over, but we can't deal with this issue where longtime resident safety Helen Clark, for example, myself. Some people have taken care of it personally. I don't have the funds to do that. Okay. I, and again, I, I, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer until talk to George and, and see see what what the elevations are. Um, and, and well, if there's a four inch difference, obviously there's been a. I, I think that's what he said. A significant change. Well, it's not just one. I mean, you first came in here saying it was one paving, and I think it's. No, it's a, I didn't say it was it, it's, one. It's paving. it's 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 a it's a combination of a as as Bruce said, it's it's may, maybe a over the year type of thing. But I do know that the last work on the road is when the problem began. Prior to that, was that when yeah. we had it all dug up and redone? Was that last work when we had it all dug up? No, and they, just, they just they uh, just top coat that, David. They just put an inch yeah, and a half on that. They, they didn't take the no, they just put top. Out. They put an inch and a half that's, on. That's, that's the issue. They, yeah, they just put an inch and a half on. From what it looks like. And if they went in, if they did an apron there, it would have drained into the road like it did before. That's all I'm asking. Now, when they put in the new sidewalk across the street from me where there was any discrepancy between the driveway and the sidewalk, did the town take care of it? Mm -hmm. did, did Probably. They, did they taper it in, feather it in? 
because you'd have to comply with ADA requirements, yes. Oh, so, because I'm not disabled, you don't give a damn about me. No, I, I, well, A, I would, I would disagree with your, that we don't care about you. You know, I'm not trying to be unreasonable. I know. But I mean, uh, so far, and this problem has been going on for a number of years because Paul Corpita, as I said, used to float paper boats in his lake. I think to read some of the minutes. Well. Because he lived on South Main Street. I think I have stated my case, and as I said, I'll, I'll keep Marky on speed dial. Well, I I, mean, uh, <coughs> I came out tonight in this weather, and I was hoping I could get a little more response. What would you like us to say that we'll be there tomorrow and pave it? No. What? Would, but what? What? But your comment was you wanted more of response. What would that response be? Some indication I, I, that we are seriously considering. I, I told you we're looking. I, I was just. I we're did. looking at, you know, we're looking at a lot of things in this country. Things aren't getting done. I, actually, I'm. I'm. Don't look at the country. I just look at the 14.7 miles of Sunderland right now. Okay. And that that that's all I'm talking about. Well, I thank you for your time, but I, I can't say and, that I'm going home feeling much better. Than what I well, hopefully after after we get to, after we get done with talking with George and looking at what the grades are out there and what their options will have, we'll we'll talk to you and hope you'll feel better. I and and unfortunately this isn't unfortunately this isn't one of those things I can give you instant gratification on. No, I'm not asking for you to come tomorrow, although George responded very nicely today to the sidewalk problem, George, which George is a is different a issue. I. George, George, is a stand, George is a stand-up guy. He'll, he'll, but, uh, tr he'll try to make it happen. And I'm not the first person that's complained about this. And, and yeah, and, and you, 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 I mean, I, for, you and I just dif differ on who's responsible for someone's driveway. I mean. Well, you know, you. I, once told me that no matter how flat you make a pancake, there's two sides to it. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yes, sir. yes. No way, man. That's what you told me. That's an expression I learned from you, Tom. No. <laughs> All right. Now, let me point out the fact that yes, for over 50 years, yeah. I have mowed, fertilized, raked town property. I know. If I'm going to get real pushback on this, then I'm going to start saving money so I can fix it by abdicating my responsibilities for taking care of town property. I'll, I'll protest like a neighbor of mine has protested. Okay. I, I mean... I, I certainly hope I don't have to do that because I have a great deal of pride in this town. I would say that I would totally agree with you on that statement, absolutely. But, you know, as I said, after three hip replacements, I'm not looking for a fourth. I know. I, we, no one wants you to fall down. You know, at least maybe they could put some sand down. I'll, we'll talk, I'll talk to George. And, and, and like I said, hopefully, Hopefully we'll have. I mean, Sherry can tell. She can ask Sherry. We've we talked about grades on, on South Main Street with George. So, I, I and 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 that's why that wasn't that's why that wasn't paved last year, is because there's there's a there a concern on how how mm -hmm. it's it's addressed and it's addressed fairly. And 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 I, I I think, personally. Maybe not the entire time that you know me but most of the time that you know me um, we we try to do what's right I, I agree so and, and we're, we're gonna try and, and again we I understand your concern I, I don't think it's a 
I don't, I don't think it's an outlandish concern. I, I, I also think, I don't know if you and I will ever agree on this one item. We'll agree on 95% of the other things, but we're, we'll, we're, we're not, we're gonna take, we, we, I can tell you, honestly tell you that we take your concern very seriously and we'll, and we'll, and we'll try to do what's best, not only for, for you, but for everybody. You, you know that, I, and we're gonna try. And, and, and we'll be straight up with you and, and, and we're honest with you. And, 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 and to tell you, some, you and I are probably the only ones that are un, not uncomfortable with our conversation that we're having right now. I, I've known you for a long time, you've known me for a long time, and we're talking like two old friends. I hope there's mutual respect. Absolutely. But, and and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be honest with you, I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything, and, and, but I, I, I treat you like I, I would treat someone that I care deeply about, because I do deeply care about you, Mr. Richards. Are there any black storm drains right now around there? No. That's another, you know, little service I've done to the town when I was more capable. I frequently clean the, the catch basin near there, you know, and that's why I'm, I'm saying that. <coughs> Well, there's no. Would be nice. There needs to be a crown. There needs to be a crown in that driveway, in all the driveways. Because right now the driveways are flat. There should be a crown, in my opinion. I think if you had a crown in there, we'd be better off. But there, there are no crowns, and I think that hurts. Because you're right. Because you don't get, and because there's no crown, you don't. There's not a crown in the driveway. You don't. You, the water just accumulates like ponds across the entire thing. We'll we'll work on it. It's definitely, and it has deteriorated badly <clears throat> as a result of the water collecting. We get the freeze thaw. The water, the water underground, <clears throat> the water underground, the, the movement of the water underground is is contributing to the breakup of South of South Main also. So, though the water, you're right. The water, water is a concern. Absolutely. Well, I thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thanks for coming. I realize I raised my voice a few times and I apologize for that, but I'm an old man. For what? We're all... You get grumpy once in a while. I know. We all do. Well, you know. I know. How grumpy I get. Especially in nine o'clock class, biology class. And the kids in the back room are screwing off. This is his chance to get even, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It's a yep. good thing I no, respect him no, that, that, otherwise I... Hey, there was four marking periods that you got even with me that I can never replicate. <laughs> Thank you. He sends the history there. <laughs> Night, Mr. Richards. Okay. See, those, those teachers stay with you for a long, <laughs> long time. Like long lessons. I'll oh. pay back those so they got to remember. <laughs> <laughs> did you have Mr. Richards? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A few years before you did, Tom. I don't remember much high school biology, though. <laughs> the only thing I remember is I hated those fruit flies. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Do you uh, play around with fruit flies at uh, the tech school? They better not be in the kitchen. They better not be in the kitchen, right? All right. All right. So next up, uh, Mr. Martin, come up and talk to us about the uh, the budget for uh, Franklin Tech School. And Russ. Thank you. Uh, left in the text, okay? Thanks for letting us, uh, Bruce. Thank and uh, Elliot. Thank you for letting us take the. Uh, yeah. Gonna go around first. to the other side, Esther. The other side. I haven't eaten dinner yet, Tom. So. Huh? I haven't eaten dinner yet, so. Can we switch? I know. That's a know. typical Monday for me. Input? Did you? Oh, input yeah. two, I think it is. Come on. Yeah, cool. so our, our Bruce, that, 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 that boat ramp now is beautiful. Of course it is. It's gorgeous. He's a good engineer. Yeah, he's been great to work with. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, if they almost need to dredge it across 
to get to the other bank. But that's why that river is so good, Tom, because it keeps the big boats out. You know, the only time the big boats come up here is when the water's up high. Y you're right, um, because you're because I mean, most of the summer, you're hard pressed getting across. You're, yeah, it, you're, it, it you're starts hard. right down north of the Hatfield boat ramp. That's where it starts getting shallow. Yes. Yep. You, right off the Red Rocks, there's like a 60 foot deep, but after that, it's. And, and you know, the state does own riverfront up in North Sunderland where they could put in a couple of carry down boat they launches do? there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. They own substantial road frontage, up there, river frontage up there. We should talk to them about that because that, that's, a, that's a beautiful paddle from, from up there down. Yeah. It, it's it's gorgeous and it, it's a, and it's pretty it's slow water most of the time yep. also it is gorgeous it's not measure. okay what? franklin it's tech wow all righty i wanted to thank the is that the correct um, having russ corpus and myself here tonight we try to send out notices to all of our 19 member towns to see who would have us for a fincon meeting so we could get them an idea <laughs> on what we've been doing over the last year with the taxpayers' money and help you be able to plan for what we project in enrollment to be for the future as well. And so we're gonna go through some things um, and it'll be about, probably about 10 minutes. That's generally about what we do. Uh, just in the last year, we increased uh, student participation in past scores in the AP courses that we are offering. How many AP courses do you offer? Uh, we offer an English composition, a computer science, a math as well. And, huh, and you got good participation in those? Well, if you flip two screens ahead, please. There, no, back. Back. There you go. I, I haven't had him well trained, yet, so I'm trying to work with him. We were um, he's recognized. Man, he's management. So yeah. You, thank you, Pavlov. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, recognized as the one of 18 school districts in the entire state on the AP honor roll. Absolutely. That's a national re recognition that we have. We were the only vocational technical school in the state to receive this honor. And um, that just displays when we started the AP courses about six or seven years ago, they, this, the students are participating at a much higher level. They're beginning to pass those AP exams. And um, so it's been a really good credit to the teachers and to the students. So um, you can go back one. Back. There you go. Just to give an idea, so we increased our Tech Connect program, which is a summer youth uh, program that we have for grades five, six, and seven. We are sharing a music teacher with the town of Irving. So what happened there is that Irving had a halftime instructor that they felt that they were going to lose. That was an excellent instructor. We had a retirement in our music at a 1.0. So we went and we um, were able to negotiate the other half of that position, which allowed us to add a Spanish um, instructor. So for no increase in the budget, we were able to get a little bit more diversity within the curriculum. Can, can I just give you an attaboy for being creative? Well, thank you. <laughs> because that is, that, I mean, to, to look out like that, to find that in partnering with a, another district that's, that's uh, outstanding on your part. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, but we're all in the same situation with Dakota. We are, but it's how we, we, it's how we address those issues, yeah, and, and, exactly. that, and that's really thinking out of the box. Nice job. And we have um, a .5 health course and .5 special education math um, position. We need to add in the special education area because of our significant increase in our student IEP profile, and I will get to the, how that impacts all of us. Next one. What's your summer school academy? That's a, a Tech Connect program. It's it, you know the kids get a chance to go in and do some programming and web design, some carpentry and maybe some plumbing, depending on what the interest level is. And they do a little activity in the afternoon. So seventh, seventh, eighth graders. Yeah. Or seventh. Yeah. Grade six, seven, eight. Six, seven. So middle, middle schoolers. Yeah. This is the house we just finished um, at the end of the summer, and that's a that is a cooperative agreement. Uh, with the Greenfield Savings Bank to a 5013C that we formulated a few years back. 
That way we get a chance to build our own house. And the other housing project we have done in the last 15 years have been in collaboration with the Habitat of Humanity, but we're not really doing the house. This is a great learning opportunity for our students um, to build the house from beginning to end. They landscape it, they do everything. They do the walkways, the HVAC, the air conditioning, the heating, the plumbing, they do the electrical, they build the whole house. So what happened here is that that house sold for $238,000. The Greenfield Savings Bank then took that profit and they purchased the next lot and they had that foundation put in and now our kids are building the next house. So each year, if we keep this going, there's enough of the profit for the Greenfield Savings Bank that even after they bought the next lot and all the materials to build the next house, there was still about 40,000 bucks left over. So it's a nice collaborative agreement between the Greenfield Savings Bank and Franklin County Tech, and it didn't get a lot of press. How but come? I have no idea, but it was, um, there's a guy out there. I was gonna say you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really exciting that these kids can walk into an interview to a general contractor and say, I built this, I done this on a job, I done this, and it's real skills. And that's what I'm looking for, because many of the kids that you see in this picture here, our, our exit data tells us that these kids are moving back to their hometowns, starting their own businesses, mm -hmm. getting jobs and paying taxes right back to the town in which you guys are paying for them to go to. I mean, not that the driveway is not important, but this has, <laughs> a, but this has a much bigger impact on the, econ the economy regionally. Yeah. And I think that, that really deserves a, you know, some press on that. So, so excuse me. When, when you when you sold the house, was, was the house sold as a um, on the open market, or is it was sold with a de deed restriction for uh, for uh, yeah. um, oh, affordable, like housing? affordable housing? No, it was sold on the open market. So it was sold on the open yes. market. Yes. Yeah. That's probably how they oh, can maintain the profit yeah. margins. That's why. Exactly. Yeah. But I how, mean, how do you, how do you, how do you ever come up with the idea of partnering with the bank that 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 is a that is a credit to our carpentry instructor and a member of our school committee who have really good connections with the Greenfield Savings Bank and utilize that relationship to be able to move through that avenue and of course when we see something like that I it's not hard to support that's good we, we did approach several banks, and, and Greenfield Savings, the model with them is they were willing to go with brand new construction, whereas a lot of the other banks wanted to um, rehab some of the houses that they had to take back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, and our, our instructors wanted to go from soup to nuts from the ground, and so we approached a bunch of banks and Greenfield Savings, and to the credit of our carpentry instructor, he was like a dog on a bone. He yeah. would go visit the banks yeah. himself, Say, look, I can do this. Or we know we can do it. I'll show you prints of different houses I've done, and they were able to roll on that. Good. Uh, and, 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 and again, thinking of ways to to maximize a student's education um, and involving private industry in this, and I would say in this time, yeah. involving private industry it is a key component. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, partnering, the part, the whole aspect of partnering, that that is really, if you look in the college, you look at colleges today, it's all about how do how do I get our how do you know the presence of the colleges are, and the deans and the provosts, they're all wondering how can I get my students that first in into, you know, industry, you know how how yep. how can I get them there? How can I get them co-op? And, and that you, you guys are doing that. I mean. Yeah, that's important. And, you know, we want to be able to get these kids out and about. Another part of, about getting these kids out and about, it doesn't mean anything if we're teaching kids on machinery from the 1940s and 50s and 60s. Right. Because that's not who we are in today's industry. So we've been searching high and low. And as you're probably well aware, we refurbished our machine technology shop not too long ago with all modernized CNC technology. But our welding shop needed the next part of that. So we entered into a competitive grant. We received a half a million dollars of a competitive grant. And we, this is just an example of one of the huge life-size robotic arms. 
Um, but other modern technology that is evident in the field of welding and manufacturing that wasn't in existence eight years ago. Mm. And so we um, refurbished the entire welding shop with probably five or six new state-of-the-art machines. We took out some old ones. Uh, we put a new ventilation system in. We expanded the footprint in the space of the shop by 1,500 feet, added a classroom. So it really looks like a new area as well. Next one. And so this is one of the big large machines that came into the shop. So we're just trying to get, and these come with CNC computer modules with them and they're all computer numerical controlled. So the students get to learn how to program, set up and run complex machinery, which is extremely important. Next one. That's just the ventilation system. Next one. And we put in a new collision repair paint booth as well. That was uh, existing to the building that was over 40 years old and that was becoming a safety issue. So we had to replace that next. Is that water? Huh? Is you got a water drop on that? Or how, how do you, how do you uh, the paint, how do you suck up the fumes? Is it just? Um, it's a modernized ventilation system and I'm not sure how that all works. Yeah. You're on my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, that's right. You guys are the ideas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't know how to do it. Yeah. We don't know how to talk about it. And then um, we were able to, uh, for the first time in our school history, we were able to put in new sports lights for, um, we had brand new basketball courts that were going to be teared down and replaced with old, from our old tennis courts, which were never used. So this way we get to run some leagues for the youth in the area at our school and we had night lights to be able to do it. We had our, we, we were the only school district in the county without night lights for the football games and we added those in there. Our students did all the work. They mm -hmm. did the trenching, the electrical, they, they, um, they hooked up all the lights. All, so we had to pay a minimum cost as compared to everywhere else. We paid less for, now we are the only ones in Western Mass out of all the schools, except for some of the colleges, with LED football lights. So now we save in electricity, and we didn't reach our max output, so we don't have to worry about how long they're on. You know, and so that's another huge advantage of what we were able to do, trying to think long-term, as far as um, the electricity bill and all that stuff. Next one. So I just want to give you credit as a superintendent for being kind of the general contractor on our projects. And part of the savings, so the students, we had the electrical students, the landscaping horticulture students help us out with both the, the parking lot lights, the field lighting, uh, they help contractors on our new uh, windows and doors projects, several different things. A good chunk of the funding for this spray, uh, spray booth came from money that was left over from that project. Yeah. So it was kind of neat the way the kids, it wasn't the same shops, but the kids got to see we reinvested back into the kids after they helped us save on these projects. And it's, it's just a kind of a neat thing in being in a Vogue school. There you go. <laughs> this is brand new. We are looking to start a veterinarian science program starting next fall. It's been in the works for a while now. Um, we are in the middle of this particular process. We will start and phase it in slowly for next year, ninth grade only. For the year after that, 9th and 10th. For the year after that, 9th, 10th, 11th. Then after the end of four years, we'll have a fully enrolled program. We have, a, we have every intent of, um, we are refurbishing a couple of classrooms right now to make space for it internally. But we are gonna be building an outdoor building um, to, be able to, um, to be able to house that clinic. And it already is an extremely popular demand on the part of the students. When we did some survey data with local eighth graders as well as current ninth graders, it would have been our most popular shop. If we think about it, Franklin County Tech has the largest amount of farmland in the state. It is a number one and two in the amount of revenue source going back and forth in agricultural. There's a lot of animal clinics in the area, yet there's no training facility. Franklin County is the only county in the entire state without a training facility for students. So here we are going to begin that whole process of getting students trained as ABA specialists, which is approved veterinarian assistants, 
on their way to becoming veterinarian technicians once they go to a two-year colleges. I've already established a program advisory board, including Tufts University, UMass, Mount Wachusett, who all have vibrant veterinary tech programs, and uh, we have industry partners associated with that as well. So we are really fast moving with this, and we're excited about the momentum so far. So that's just another new initiative that's uh, coming down the pipe that we've been planning for, for a little bit, but now it's on the horizon. Next. All right, here we go. Here's where the numbers are. This is why we're here. We currently have 463 in-district students from our October 1 count of 2018. As you can see, we got a slow incline after a slow drop-off, after a pretty dramatic drop-off, actually, in a very short period of time. Um, that was due by multiple factors, as we're all aware, declining enrollment. Some of that next slide might be more helpful. This is a tough slide to see, but I'll give you an idea. When we look at 2012 and 13, follow the blue, it's 806. That's how many eighth graders were in all of Franklin County. Let's look just five short years later, 598. That affected everybody. That was where the eighth graders were. It's climbing back up a little bit. Last year to 638, 617, it's, it kind of levels off around 615 on average from here to the foreseeable future. Um, that's an important number. The, the percentiles up here are the percent of students out of that orange that we actually enroll. So we have 143 back here at 17.7%. We have 143 this year at 23% of the total population. So that just gives you an idea on how we plan. So we thought about this five years ago. Five years ago, I did this data analysis and I saw it was coming to 598. At that point in time, we started to reduce our um, efficiency. We had to eliminate some positions, we had to cut back, and we did it gradually over that four or five year time frame. So we weren't in the newspapers as making 10, 15 cuts. <coughs> we did it gradually. And now we're at the point where, now that we're adding a new program, we're gonna slowly be building that back up a little bit. But everything's gonna be phased in. So so is your tar Mr. Martin, your is your target approximately 140 freshman entry? It's hard to say. This was based on 12 shops. We went from 13 to 12. Right. Because we eliminated a business technology shop about four or five years back. Now we're adding back to where we once were. So it's more than likely we'll be in that range somewhere right here but it's hard to say until we see the overall interest because you don't you don't see the the school population increasing right right no, not the enrollment in the entire in, in, yeah in a franklin county you're not seeing that increase right okay but i am saying that since we are adding that one more shot that might net us a little bit more than we've had in these past few years you know depending yeah, yeah. on the interest no, level. Makes sense. it's all about the interest yes and here's um, uh, what's also contributing to some of our finances as far as being able to support the students' needs. This is our special education percentage for the high school. Here's all the other high schools and towns. Franklin County Tech is an average of more than twice as high on the average. This is an average of 17.7% .7 of the special education population. We're 38.5. So that, that's students with IEPs? Yes. So we are legally obligated to provide those services. So we added, you know, and those are different profiles. Some kids need some social, emotional, behavioral support in order to develop the employability skills so they can get hired down the road. So we hired a special education school adjustment counselor. We added a special education math instructor. And I project we're gonna add another teacher down the road as well to support the IEP process. So it is something that we're keeping an eye on. Our average percentage prior to the last several years was in the 28% range. But we've had an influx of students from other school districts. And these are kids who have needs, but these are kids who can also, we're confident that we can change how they're learning, provide them a good hands-on experience, 
get jobs, go back to your communities and be productive citizens. So that's going to be our goal with all of us, with all of the students that we have. Next. Okay, um, enrollment trends. What to predict for the town of Sutherland. Here's your trend since 2012. You know that high year we talked about? You kind of almost follow that. You had 13, 9, 10, 6, 6, 10, 6, and we are projecting 8. We have six kids from Sutherland in our school right now. We are, we are graduating three. We have currently four applications. So that's seven. I think we might get one or two more. So I'm projecting that red figure at eight right now. That could be seven, that could be 10 or 12. I, it's too early to tell. Um, but that's just, will give you an idea of what to kind of expect moving forward down the road as you're planning for your budget. So, so over the last few years, we've been, it, it appears students, some students are going to Smith mm -hmm. because of classes that, that aren't offered at Franklin Tech. Mm -hmm. Now, so you monitor that, right? No. We, are, we have no way of monitoring that. That is up to the individual town. I remember many years back when I was a principal, probably seven years back, I was on the town floor in Sunderland at a town meeting, and we had this conversation. I, 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 it's interesting because, and, and, and I, I guess, how, how would that information, like, we've lost a couple, well, it, it, I, it wouldn't be unusual that you lose kids because you don't offer an agricultural pro, uh, a farming. Right now, that's true. And criminal justice is the other get, yeah. 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 Criminal justice yeah. and agriculture. But if you're 13, 14 years old and you like animals, this new program might change some of that in the future. That's very likely to be something that might change for some kids that are 13 and 14 years old as they're making that decision. Um, yeah, and, and, yeah, and I, I don't know, <clears throat> and again, I, I, I personally believe that the trade schools are, um, you, you know, you, you're talking about IEPs. Yeah. I, I, I'm a tremendous a proponent of every kid learns differently. Yeah. And, and 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 you you may be a margin you may be a marginal student, and all of a sudden you go to the the, the tech school Franklin Tech, and you really are involved with auto mechanics, right. and all of a sudden you start doing auto mechanics, and all of a sudden you have a reason to go to school, and and now your math your math becomes easier, English becomes easier because. Um, to stay to stay in a tech school, you have to do well in those yeah. subjects as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now you're motivated to do to do well. So, so I I can actually see a kid maybe coming with an IEP and that IEP changing quickly because of what's offered. That's often the case. It sounds like you know a lot of our students. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what happens. I, well, I just know what happened to me when I went to college. When I went to college, you know, math, math was to me was boring. Yeah. But if you want to be an engineer, guess what you have to do? Yeah. You do math, lots, right? Lots of math. But you know, my problem was that they gave you that piece of uh, white brown paper, and they said do pages on page three fifteen, do yeah. the odd one through thirty five. Well, to me, it didn't make sense. But when I went to school and learned that you actually use math to figure out problems, yeah, it became easy and it became so. Uh, you applied it, yeah. But it was different. But I'm just saying, for a tech school, yeah. in a, in a tech school, it's a little bit different. And what I was trying to get to originally is 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 how to get to you to tell you what we're hearing from our residents that that happen to go to to Smith. And I, I don't think we had I, an effective communication. I can answer that one. What um, some other towns do as well is you have a right because you're put in the bill. Absolutely. You have a right to then request the report cards of the students going to Smith Book. And on those report cards, it will say if they transfer to another shop. Sometimes what happens is they start off going to an agricultural shop and then they explore and they end up in machine tech, something that we have. 
or they end up in some other shop that we have. That's what you're gonna be careful of. And the only way they can go to Smith Boat if it's truly for the agricultural or the criminal justice, that's it. Everything else they have so, to come so, and So and basically, basically you have the same, you're offering the same programs as Smith Except for, for us, I mean that we, we have we, welding and programming and some other ones they don't have. But yes, all the core vocational shops. Yeah. Yes, we have them all. So they can't. So when you get those report cards, and that's been the case in some other areas as well. They get those report cards. They find out the kids not taking what they're supposed to be taking, and um, the town isn't obligated for that bill. Yeah, I know. I I, I that I mean. <clears throat> To, to me, it's more important. It's more important understanding what, because we want we want Franklin Tech to be successful. So, and, and if 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 we're losing if we're losing a bunch of kids to uh, to another tech school, yeah. um, we we think we we need you to know know that. I and guess. it's a it's a substantial cost when you're paying whatever the per pupil cost is here. Twenty seven thousand. Twenty-seven thousand and transportation. Plus, tra plus transportation. So you're paying over forty-five thousand dollars a year for one student. Yeah. It would be seventeen thousand dollars for the tech school. Do you guys have any kids that are tuitioning in from other districts that don't offer programs in the towns that they live in? Um, we have kids that are not part of our nineteen-member towns, like from Charlemont and some of the other towns that don't commit to a both tech school that will tuition in. So that does happen. Oh, you, but you have. Kids that are in the Smith's vocational. They area. only have Northampton. They're just they're, they're oh, not a regional. City of Northampton. They're okay. not a regional. Okay. okay. You know, so but they don't have territory. Okay. Um, yeah. So so kids from from Hopkins can go to Smith, but they pay it. They they pay tuition. They pay the tuition, the transportation, the whole nine yards because they don't pick up. Yeah. So it's a lot different. It's a, it's a lot. That's why it's important to kind of know where your trends are. It's also important to do an inquiry to local schools like, you know, Pathfinder Smith or wherever the student may end up and get an idea where the students are residing and get an idea what they're taking for courses. Because hmm. then you're going to have a much better idea. Russ? One second, Bruce. You got a question? Yeah. Do you have a recruitment program where you're going into the middle schools and we Is have to program yes. and try to recruit students that are interested in vote tech. They're supposed to <coughs> allow us to go in there to because we're an extension. We're not a competitor with the local school districts. So for for a school like Frontier, we offer unique educational opportunities that they can't offer because we get Chapter seventy four um, certified programs funding and all that stuff. So we are able to offer an extension of what Frontier has. You know, they're a much more um, sophisticated school to get kids ready for college prep and all of those avenues and we promote that with our students so when we go and we visit we say you know you've got to pick the school that's going to get you to the right place of what your career and your aptitude and, and the place that you would like to go so we have, we do promote Franklin County Tech if those students are interested you know, so we just want to be careful on that end of it as well because we're a partnership with all of our school districts. And so we're an extension of what we have to offer. Okay, Russ, I did not talk. Why don't you take over? <laughs> <laughs> when, so the when the numbers get bigger, when the numbers get smaller, I'm going to oh, give yeah, it to him. Yeah. So, Bruce, th this, is where, this is the interesting part. Look at the different assessments every community has. Oh, I know, but it's based on the student enrollment. Right. Uh, no. No, because if you look at the per pupil look at, column. Uh, yeah, look at your per pupil assessment, which is at the end. Yeah. I highlighted it and put it in bold. Oh, okay. You guys are right. I can't okay. see it. Okay. Yeah. So, obviously, you've been on the select board a long time because I remember seeing you many times. I know. You were, <laughs> I think you were in like third grade. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think I was shaving when I first thought it. So, uh, Tom's right. The, the poster child for what was wrong with the original Ed Reform formula back in 93 was actually a couple towns in Franklin County that, that were members of Franklin County Tech. We had a year where the state came out where we had Conway 
I believe it was Conway at $23,000 per pupil going to Franklin County Tech in a town of either Irving or Gill, I'm gonna forget which one of our small towns, and they, were, they had about a $6,000 per pupil because that's the way the formula ran back then and it said, hey, if you're a rich town like Conway, you're gonna spend more locally on uh, each student than a, a poor town. Um, since then, they, about, about 12 years after the 1993 Ed reform, they tweaked the formula. So we got our towns a little bit closer together. So you're gonna see some towns a little bit higher than you guys. So Deerfield, Conway, get up to about 18.7 per student. You guys are about 17.6 per student. But if you look at the bottom right hand corner, our average per pupil for Franklin Tech from our member towns is 13.3. So you're still considered one of our rich towns. <laughs> what do they base that on? The income of the people in the town and the population? How I guess do they the EQB yes. is in there, right? So, EQ, yeah, EQB. So, Okay. They, they use okay. half of the formula roughly is EQV, so what your property is worth in your town, and then the other half of the formula theoretically looks at your, your income, your median income, your, your, yeah. population. But, okay. but in the end, you're right at the root, Bruce, though. It's the number of students, because no matter what the right. formula right. is, right. if your students increase, then your all goes up, yes. it goes right. up yeah. substantially, yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. real root of it, yeah. but then there's the formula. And, and you can't plan that out from year to year to year because you don't know until, right. what is it, based on prior? It's on the October 1 count of this past October okay. that okay. your 20 budget is on. So that's okay. why when Rick gave you that little graph before, it's giving you a chance to think it one more year out. So for 2021, we're already guessing you're gonna probably have about eight kids coming from yep. Sunderland. Yep. So that'll at least give you or Sherry or somebody who's starting to put their budget together in 2021 a ballpark of, oh, okay, Tech told us it'll probably be going up a little bit. So, so, so just that possibly we go up to 12, 14, so hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when, when, we had the front, when we had the Frontier Regional District from 1993 at reform, we changed that that was changed and and basically and and now we run a five-year rolling you know right. for right. averages to average things out that does not be a because you have to get 19 towns to agree to do that and it'd be next to impossible to do that but it's still 20 years later i've been at the tech 20 something years it's still on my to-do list to try to get a rolling average into our district agreement but i think i'll oh, be for, i think i'll be retired and gone before the district in 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 and I can understand both arguments for and against. Um, for it, it, if it allows budgeting practices, it allows you to it, it allows you to uh, right. take take the big swings out of it. So yeah, we'll have to recommend that. So this is just a graph that Russ knows how to do math. You can move to the next one. <laughs> this is the capital assessments. Oh, now, oh, capital assessment. So we have, since our 19 member towns were generous enough uh, two or three years ago, two or three Junes or Mays ago, uh, to vote us the capital projects, and we, sh we showed you a little bit of the field lighting and some of that stuff on slides earlier. The capital assessment now is a little different than the operating assessment. The capital assessment, as you can see, is based on the latest U.S. Census. That's half the formula, and the other half of the formula is the, uh, the EQV comes back into play on the other part of the formula too. So we have a calculation for the capital assessment for Sunderland at 12,874.26 for next year. Um, I know some towns will put the capital assessment and the operating assessment together, other towns do it in separate articles. That's totally up to you guys. Some people so don't even put it in there at all. Somebody, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's trying to save you money. And then um, here's how we balance our budget. So here's a, a simple uh, one pager with the revenue sources on the top, the uh, appropriations or uses of our funding on the bottom, and if Rick and Russ do the job right, the top 11 million six equals the bottom 11 million six. So on the revenue side, what do we do? We had um, in this draft of the budget, which is past the public hearing stage, but hasn't been finalized by our school committee. 
we have a 2.8% increase in our town assessments. So that's the average town-wide, but we went with a 2.8% increase. The capital assessment, I showed you the calculation earlier, that's based on the debt schedule for capital. Chapter 78, the governor's, uh, the governor and the foundation committee who tweaked the Ed Reform <coughs> formula was uh, good to us. So we received more Chapter 70 money than we did in the past, even though we are similar to Frontier that we were in Hold Harmless. And I don't know if you're aware of what Hold Harmless is, but basically what the state that said is when your enrollment's declining, we're gonna give you the same dollars we gave you the year before. So theoretically, you're getting more per pupil each year, but you're only getting the same dollars as the year before. I think Frontier's probably $2 million into Hold Harmless, which might be 100 students. We were just barely into Hold Harmless. So the tweaking of the formula, even though the basis of the formula said you'll get what you got the year before, but now they're giving you extra money for um, special ed students and extra money for students in poverty. You know, whatever the tweaks were in the formula, we ended up with a little bit more chapter 70. So I think, believe us, in Greenfield and maybe Gil Montague were the three school districts in the county that actually received some significant increase in chapter 70. The other schools are so far into home, hold harmless, they're basically gonna get what they got the year before. So we, we projected the governor's budget on the chapter 70. Transportation, we made a, a fairly conservative projection on that also. There's also, you'll see a couple lines with tuition. So there's the tuition costs that we get from some of the Amherst area towns who don't belong to a Vogue school and Charlemont and a couple of uh, Franklin County towns that don't belong to a local school. So we get money coming in from those students uh, as well. Baked into the appropriation side of the budget, we have anticipated we are in the year of negotiating teacher's contract. So baked into what we've done down below is <coughs> we put in um, a factor for us that we feel is going to be there to absorb whatever increases the teacher's contract may dictate to us. We also did the um, steps, so the teachers move over a step per year, so we projected out who's moving up steps in their contract, and we projected out what we feel a COLA is. So we're pretty confident that we've got the appropriation side of the ledger covered, even though as of today we don't know what the teacher's contract's gonna look like next year, but we feel we've got, got it covered pretty good. Also in that lower section, the appropriation section, is the animal science program that Rick talked about. So we got a salary in for a new teacher in there. We put money in for equipment for the program to get the program started up and running. So that's all baked in. So we, we were able to add a program and still only hit our towns for roughly a 2.8% increase. Again, we had some help from Chapter 70 and other areas. And some of that equipment being capital? Operating costs, or was that? Wouldn't some of that equipment be for capital? Yeah. Capital? So, so what we're hoping to do is we don't. Uh, our process to go out for a bonding was we had all 19 towns hold basic, basically a, an election on the same day. They had to vote on capital. Painful process. Towns had to incur money for the special election to have that that happen. So when we're moving into this this expanded program, and Rick had alluded to it earlier with, a, with an outbuilding, is we've got a way, due to the extra monies that we're getting from the governor and the budget, we feel over the next couple of years we can phase in getting a butler building or a some type of steel building established, get the shell up one year, and then hopefully we'll, we'll build the interior the following year without going out for a capital assessment. Because for us, a capital assessment really kind of means that bonding. We did it, we did, the towns allowed us to start a capital stabilization a handful of years ago. So the money in E and D, if you look at the top, right where Rick's pointing, yeah. yep. right in there, we are certified for more than that in E and D. We're certified up in the 500 something thousand dollar range. We're using 220 to balance this budget. We want to take the other chunk of money, go to our school committee when we know this money's in the bank after the state has has passed their budget. Mm -hmm. If we know we get that money in the bank, we want to come back to our school committee and say, can we take 250,000 of that, put it into the capital stabilization fund, but then let us start to build that steel building. 
for the, for the other program. So that way we don't have to go out and incur more debt. So it's a vehicle for us to do that. Yeah. Any other highlights, Mr. Martin? Um, yeah, you love these pie charts. So, so, here's, <laughs> <laughs> so here's Pac-Man, and this you'll see Pac-Man on most of the most of uh, your area schools. The blue section is the town assessment. So that's how the local dollars are supporting the school and town assessments because of the dysfunction of the ed reform formula were growing and growing so Pac-Man was starting to eat more and more of the pie. The red sections are the state aid that we get for chapter 70 and the smaller red piece of the pie is the state transportation money. So hopefully that, that Pac-Man will start to go away with this new ed reform formula. And the appropriation side of the budget, the reddish orangish pieces of the pie are all our labor costs, whether it's straight uh, wages or benefits. So you can see we're, we're a uh, labor intensive industry, so a lot of our costs are on the labor side. And like Rick said, when we had the ability to look five years out, saw the trends, we were able to reduce some staff size through attrition, retirements, and different things without a lot of uh, pain and angst to our teachers association. So that was an easy process. And that's the end of our presentation. Any questions? Yeah. Um, yep. If you could actually go way back to one of the earlier ones, yep. when you had our projected, uh, Sunderland's projected enrollment, I think it was something like the, yeah. So this is, projects us as increasing our enrollment next year by a two, couple so at this point. Twenty five percent. Yeah. But these budget numbers have us going uh, from our have our enrollment dropping by forty percent and have our our fiscal uh, assessment is goes down by about yeah. sixty five. That doesn't have to see what we're doing is the red area isn't on your agenda. So here's your right. four, you're going from this drop ten to six. Here's your forty percent. Here's your forty percent. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. So what we're trying to do for you as a finance committee is say when you work on your 2021 budget, yep. put in for each so a year from right. now, put, yep. in, put in the bump. Right. Confusing, I know, because we're, we're in one fiscal year, we're talking about next fiscal year, and we're still talking about yeah. year. Right, if we never put this up, then we'd be done. That's but right. what we're trying yeah, to right. do is give you an, an extra year out to get an idea that the enrollment okay. is going to creep up. Thanks. Yep. If the number's right, thank me. If the number's wrong, blame Rick. <laughs> So, so your your assessment are going up to the community by two point eight percent. Yes. Um, the two hundred and twenty thousand dollars that you're using from the iron iron uh, excuse me, which is your free cash. Yeah. Yeah. But that that two hundred and twenty thousand dollars, how does that compare to what you normally use? We used two fifty last year. So, so that that's holding pretty consistent then. Yes. That, yeah. yeah. All right, so, all right. So, so that's that's good. I, I mean, you know, I just, I think at one time you used like four hundred thousand not too long ago, right? Actually, probably one of the last times we visited four or five years ago, I, I believe you and Tom had the same type of questions. We, that that was under, concerned we were using that was some, chunk. That was under some other leadership, though, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I have a good conservative <laughs> superintendent, so we're, we're taking those peaks and valleys out. No, yeah, but but I mean I mean it's in, I mean that's one of the things that we we use because if you have I mean we look at because if you have a consistent use of that E and D at those at those levels you're not going to be able to keep restocking your E and D right. um, and so you you don't have that monies you wouldn't have those monies available right. and, and just so people know. Um, by law, you're restricted on how much money that you can maintain 5%. in the E and D, e &D um, which is five percent. And you, and if you have a, and anything in addition to that five percent, it's supposed to come back to the community. So, um, so I, I would say, I'm, and, and I, I, and again, for it's, I, 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 I will ask, but it may, maybe. Um, In October, or at at least, at least some point in the school year, maybe if you guys could write each of the communities an, an email and say, "Oh, by the way, do you have students that are going to another district, another vocational school, and and what shops are they in?" And and, and it'd be good for us just, just so I think it'd be helpful to you to find out. 
like the law enforcement, <clears throat> I think that's a, a it's an interesting concept um, for a fifteen year old working in law enforcement or and what they do. But I, I think it's an interesting concept. Um, I don't quite understand. There's that. some discussion at the state level of not making that a Chapter 74 requirement because it really doesn't fit the traditional vocational technical model, the hands-on learning. It's more of an academic course. So there's some discussion oh, about that, All right, now that, that makes that makes that makes sense. Right. right. I, I don't think it should be in a technical right. school it's basic. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I yeah, should be. Okay. Yeah. That 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 makes that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And, and but I but I think it's it's kind of nice, you know, if you if you could send a town, yeah. and and that way you maintain. It, it's just like we at we ask um, we ask our regional um, superintendent when when we lose students to school choice and or to different communities and or a charter, we we ask you know why are the students going? So it and they're able to. You know, maybe there's something they can change in their curriculum, and the same. I think it's important that it's the same thing with a tech school. So and, the to your point is is actually a, a letter drafted that Superintendent Martin's looking at. The timing is going to be different. You you mentioned October because you're thinking beginning the school year, but because both schools allow exploratory. Yeah. So if I'm a freshman going into a Vogue school, I've got basically the first half of the school year to bounce to every shop. So even though I went in thinking I want to be an auto mechanic, I get a chance to explore all the other shops and I in, may end up in cosmetology. So I might decide, you know, later. So what happens is in looking at the state regs, it's really in this January, February time frame and the way the regs are stated, it's the sending school has the right to request. So you're paying the bill, but it's really Frontier who has the right to request, probably because of confidentiality rules and all of that stuff. They have the right to request of Smith Volk and say, can you please give us those report cards of those students who are in exploratory? See, we can't because they're not our kids. Right, so, which is hard because now you've got a family in your town that sent a kid now for yeah. six months or five months to the frontier I mean to Smith and then you're saying okay well maybe Franklin Tech's got the program that you've you've chosen we want you to come back and go down go to Franklin Tech yeah and, and I but for me I, I I'm I'm not even that 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 was I, I was more concerned um, that you guys know that Franklin knows that we're losing that students are not choosing Franklin Tech because of these programs being offered and and I I don't know the right way to I don't know the right way to handle that cuz I I you know I, I don't know you know how how students choose different schools and what that today I mean it's a little bit different but I I'd be more concerned that that would keep you guys proactive to see why students are not choosing Franklin Tech and going 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 to someplace and you, else. And you're hitting the core of the animal sciences. Yeah, and, and and I and I and I I guess I also know, and and, and maybe for someone that's listening that ever wonders about the tech school, but it's an interesting process how you know and you and you kind of started talking about it when when you go to 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 Franklin Tech or Smith Vocational which whichever. In a year of freshman, your first almost half a year, you may want to be a plumber. But you, you're going. You're going to all the shops. Even if you're you're someone that if if you may have the least amount of desire to look at machine shop, you're going to spend some time in the machine shop. And if you in, and you're going to spend some time in the culinary shop. And you're going to some in the cosmetology shop. And you you have to spend that, that time. Then you get to choose four that you revisit again. Very good. Yes. Is it four or six? And, and, four. And, and, and you re, and you revisit and you re, and you revisit those and you revisit those shops, but then and then but then you you're you're able to pick one through four, but if 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 you're you may not get choice number one. Correct. If you're in a competitive shop, um, and I don't know what your most competitive shops are, but it, it changed year by year, but yeah. But you you would you if you're in a competitive shop. You may not you may not get that shot. They may have eight eight openings in that shop, and, and if you if you're number nine, 
you may have to go to number two or number three. So, which is the point? If you go to a school for a specific shop and you don't get it, it, it it's a little more complicated than yeah. just saying I want to be a uh, I want to be a chef and I, I, I want to be a culinary. But I think a lot. I I don't know. I, I think things change over time. But it, it's a it's it's I, it's interesting how you expose all the students to all the different shops, so the kids are exposed. Plus, you're able to keep them going to class, regular classes every other week also. So I, I, I think it's a unique way of doing things. But but I would say, I, I would think it'd be interesting that you, you would find out if kids are not going to Franklin Tech and they're not going to Frontier, they're going to Smith or Pathfinder or wherever the school is, why they're not, you know, why they're not going. Okay. Dave, you have any questions? No, <clears throat> Elliot, Bruce? I just wanted to say that uh, it's difficult for me because uh, I'm a teacher at uh, Turner's Falls and at uh, Great Falls, but I had, uh, it's a little bittersweet because we know, but uh, I had one of my students came into class today, one of my eighth grade students, and she was just giddy and she was delighted to share that she got into tech. She was <laughs> so excited, which was hard. It's hard yeah, for me. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's great for her, but I know yeah. she's going to have a great program, but it's also it's like, well, it's, yeah. it's tough for her. That's what it's all about, though, getting the kids excited about learning. You but, know, yeah, and I, it's, it's, that's absolutely true. I, I'd just like to say I think you run a great program up there. It's a great need for skilled tradesmen out in the industry and everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've had some... Uh, uh, Apprentice plumbers on jobs that I run. Uh, they've graduated from the tech school. Of course, they get the bottom of the barrel jobs now, but yeah. you know they're enjoying it. And, and, and you know, within five years, you know, if they go on a union job, they're 50, 60 bucks an hour. Yeah. You know, and you know they work, but it's not that bad on a union job. Yeah. And, 67, um, 26. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, it's, it's college debt. It's, it's uh, you're right with minimal college debt. Up in New York State, uh, 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 Burlington TV station, they run commercials where you get to it where math and science, study math and science. They're good commercials. And they have different industry people there saying that, you know, I run a machine shop, I run a steel fabrication shop, and math and science is the basics of all those trades, and it's very important. And it's a basic of what you guys teach up there. So it's a good program. I, I, I know our Selectman's Association has done business. We, we've had businesses come in to talk to us about what they need. Yeah. And, and I, can, I can tell you that um, when you get people from uh, Yankee Hill Machine Shop and they're yeah. telling you they need machinists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and they just don't have the, the, um, the people. I know we have a guy in town that owns a machine shop in North Amherst. Yeah. He hire, he hires he hires a lot of uh, uh, tech school graduates, vocational school graduates. It's amazing what those kids are doing on seven and eight, how they think in, in seven axes. And getting those kids out on jobs is critically important. A couple of years ago, we reallocated a position to make a full-time cooperative education coordinator. Oh, wow. Today, 65 out of our 121 seniors are out on paid co-ops. Okay, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. You know, that in our average before we hired this individual was about 15. Really? So getting out there, getting those job placements for these kids, that's what gets them staying in the communities in which they were raised. That's what gets them paying the taxes right back. So it's, it, it, it can't happen by accident. No, and, and again, I, I would just, you know, I, I know you're going to be talking to us for 10 minutes and maybe stretch a little bit longer than that 10 minutes, but I, I just want to com commend you guys on your partnering with uh, Greenfield Savings Bank. And I, I will say that name a, a quite a few times because they actually look at doing business. I, it appears that they're looking at doing business a little bit out of the ordinary, partnering with uh, the local school like you in education. I mean, that's, that says a lot about, about their thinking of the community yeah, um, that they would work with work with you to do do something like that and the partnering with the the local Irving community um, that that that's actually something that 
we need more of in 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 our system. So I'd like to commend you guys on on that also. But those those are pretty. That's pretty innovative. Um, thinking out of the box way to do business, and cause a, at least we don't see it quite off that often. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for having us. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So I guess we're all set, Elliot. If you guys are. Who do, uh, who do we have next week again? Next week is caucus. We don't have anything scheduled. We don't? Mm. Not yet, but if that changes, we're... So, so Scott's not here tonight because he's at uh, union negotiations with Frontier Teachers and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm meeting on Wednesday with the uh, school committee, I know. Never be there too. I think basically at this point we're waiting on schools and South County Senior Center. I think we've got... Yeah, they, they should, you should be able to schedule with them when, whenever you want. Okay. So I'll touch base with everyone and... I think we have a meeting. We have a meeting Wednesday night. So anytime okay. after Wednesday night, you can oh. have them. Come okay. In. Yeah. Yeah. We have to start uh, paying you. All right. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, guys, very much. Okay. Uh, approved minutes of uh, February 11th. I'll make a motion of the minutes. A motion made and seconded on February 11th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, it's 2 0. Sherry, uh, old business board of selectmen updates. Davey? Um, speaking of union negotiation meetings, my last one was canceled. Good. So. All done then, right? <laughs> We're done. Hey. Yeah, so our next one's in March. I forget the date. <clears throat> um, we had a fabulous ditch committee kickoff meeting um, last week. <clears throat> so. Went over the charge and everything, and um, got rolling on our next steps, which is going to be to essentially um, define the area that we're going to look at, make sure we've ironed that, and say, okay, you know, this is the area we're going to look at, and if we're not going to look at anything else, let's just state why, so that way we've got that in the record. And then um, <clears throat> we sort of overlap briefly with, um, and I got to talk to him about this, but. I guess under current regulations, there's no such things as ditches anymore. Um, but so we had a nice little overlap briefly with Kurt there. But <clears throat> that's one of the things we got to sort of define too. Is is okay within the area that we're going to define for our scope of work? Then what things are perennial streams? What things are intermittent streams? Um, because that it's not that you can't do any work in those areas but the, the depending on what it is it defines the scope <coughs> of the work that you can do in there and what kind of work you can do so and what was it david perennial streams and what else uh there's perennial streams and intermittent streams oh, intermittent. <clears throat> so like a perennial stream will be one that runs constantly whereas mm -hmm. an intermittent one maybe it'll dry up in the summers yeah yep. so <clears throat> uh, and then tomorrow we have our personal committee we're going to go over the <coughs> report from the Collins Center. So, looking forward to that. Good. So, that's it for me. Okay. Um, Board of Selectmen, I have. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. For, um, South County EMS tomorrow night and Senior Center on Wednesday night. So, we'll be able to update those next week. Oh, we have the school committee meeting I'm going to. <coughs> What's that? Wednesday. I'm going to go to the school community. Sunday? Yeah. So. I'll be across the river, but then I'll come yeah. back and scoot over. There you go. <clears throat> um, town administrator? Um, what do I have? I have a recommendation for a, a bid award for the engineering for the School Street manhole project. Yep. Um, we had one interested party for the just one interested part, right? party and um, that is Sarah Campbell PE and we worked with um, Sarah on the complete streets project she did the engineering for that yep. um, and uh, the <coughs> her quote for that is twenty nine hundred dollars we um, have a budget of three thousand this is from the grant yeah. so yeah okay hey, motion uh, motion I have a motion made and seconded to uh, award the engineering contract. All those in favor for the School Street sewer manhole, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Sherry, anything else? Um, and that's it for now. Okay. Um, we have part-time appointment. 
So I, we got received a letter from George, the highway superintendent, part-time seasonal. We'd like to recommend Lawrence Peters for part-time seasonal position as a snow plow operator for the town of Sunderland Highway Department. I also recommend his starting salary rate to be eighteen eighty-nine per hour. Uh, motion. A motion made for the appointment of Lawrence Peters. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Mr. Peters is now a new plow operator, seasonal. Yeah. Um, our next meeting and caucus is Monday night, oh. 6.30. We have one more thing here. Yep. The um, recommendation. Yep. Is that 6.30? Uh, 6.30. 6.30. Yeah. So our next meeting is going to be take place next Monday night. That's also the night that we hold caucus for the elected positions in town. So if you have a few moments, we should be between 6.30 and 7, run caucus. So if you have an opportunity, please come down and uh, spend a few uh, moments with us or if you're interested in running in a, for a position uh, to get your name on the ballot. So next evening, caucus from uh, 6.30 to 7. We have one final piece of uh, business and that's from the Board of Assessors, David. Uh, the Board of Assessors has reviewed their contract with CAI Technologies for tax map maintenance, and they voted to drop annual indexes as they became obsolete, it says. And this is going to give us a net savings of $400, and it's their understanding that there's a proposal to have a kiosk in town hall where the public could access our online GS and apply for building permits once they establish online, per online permitting. Um, so as submitted in their budget, they'd like to take that $400 and transfer it to their technology account to be able to do further upgrades to online GIS, which will be more relevant. So that's the recommendation for that. Okay. We don't, do we know, need to vote on that, do we, I don't think, yeah, after reading it, I don't think we. No. Because it's just an internal budget All right. transfer. Yeah. Informational. Okay. But that'll be good, though. I think anything. Absolutely. Enhancing Absolutely. Is good. So again, caucus is next, next Monday night. So we have a complete slate of uh, positions that are up for re-election. If you're interested, please come down to put your name in the hat and or just help us uh, um, um, fill, our, fill our quota so that, uh, and participate in the, uh, the caucus proceeding. Without hearing anything else, at this time I entertain a motion for adjournment. Uh, motion. We have a motion made and seconded for adjournment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We will be declared out.